guys, Crystal Palace have just managed to grab a point late on against Manchester United in a, a game that won't live long in the memory, I don't think, or may do now because of that free kick right at the end from Michael Elise, which was an absolute stunner of an equaliser. Um, I, I didn't give Elise any chance at scoring from that position, but it was like a, it was a prime Dimitri Payet esque free kick at the way he whipped it in off the bar. Uh, the near post, brilliant, and uh, yeah, United. I I, I thought uh, were the better side first half, but um, it, it, yeah, it was a game of two halves. United didn't offer anything really in in second half. Um, well, there, there there was a penalty shout early on in the second half, but other than that, there really wasn't a lot. Um, but yeah, um, United first half were, were the better side. Um, they, they they got the goal through. Bruno Fernandes, it, it was a, it, it was a good, well taken finish from Fernandes, and it was a, a good pick out by Eriksson. I think it was down the left, but I think you have to look at the Palace defending in that situation. Well, maybe not the defenders, but the midfielders, because uh, Czech Decore in midfield, who I've been impressed with this season, uh, he, he just lost his focus for this one moment and. Uh, no one had tracked the run of Ericsson. One of him or Chris Richards had to pick him up. And I think looking at the positioning of the United players in this situation, I think Richards has already got his hands full. So I think Decore should have done a little bit better in terms of uh, <clears throat> tra tracking um, Ericsson. And, and then Will Hughes that doesn't uh, spot the run of Bruno Fernandes in the pullback quick enough either. So... Yeah, it was a well-worked goal by United, though, but just not not quite uh, up to the standard defending from Crystal Palace in, in that one situation. Although, in, in the first half, they did force a magnificent save out of David De Gea through uh, a shot from Odds and Edward, which when Edward hit it, I thought, what a goal. It, it looked like it was going right into the top corner, postage stamp stuff, and uh, De Gea managed to get his hand to it and it, it was a, a quite frankly brilliant save uh, and kept it 1-0 uh, uh, kept no it was 0-0 at that point wasn't it kept, kept it 0-0 and until Bruno scored just before half time obviously uh, this this game was Wag Gorst's uh, first game up front for Man United and he didn't have really any p impact on this game to be honest uh, I, I forgot he was playing at times the only time you really noticed him was at the start of the second half when he did have that penalty shout which was VAR reviewed and I think it was the correct decision not to give the penalty in the circumstances because the referee chose not to give the penalty and um, VAR and it, clear, it wasn't a clear and obvious error I think if the referee had have given a penalty I don't think VAR would have overturned it's one of them where it's a 50-50 really one day you get that one day you don't it's not one that I think VAR should be overruling, no matter what the decision is. Um, so yeah, I think I think VAR played this one correct. And yeah, um, second half Palace, they, they made a change uh, early on in the half, uh, bringing on Abire Eze on. Uh, and I, I just thought when Eze came on, why on earth is he not starting? He's one of Palace's best players. This is one of Palace's biggest games this season. I know Palace aren't the side right now who are you know, chasing anything in particular that they're, they're, they're going to survive fairly easily, but they're not really going to be get, getting close to getting a European spot or based on current form anyway. Uh, so, it, yeah, they're, they're in a st still sort of a, a phase where they're trying to strengthen the team and just try and get better and better. Uh, although they're, they're, I don't think Palace's funding is, is the same as uh, a lot of other mid-table clubs they are. Very much a, um, it's a a club who try who, who don't really spend much more than they sell. Uh, so yeah, they 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 brought Eze on and he he just made a huge difference. Having Mateta and Edouard up front, it it just seemed that there was a sort of a disconnection between midfield and attack for Palace because you have. Two midfielders in Will Hughes and Czech Decore who, uh, you know, they, they work hard in the midfield, they, they do a job, but there was no creativity there. They, they were relying purely on Michael Elise and Wilfried Zaha for creativity, the two white men. So there was no one down the middle who looked like they were going to play someone through or 
get a shot off test David De Gea. So that that was Palace's big problem from the, pretty much the start of the game. I I, I personally feel. Um, so, so yeah, when Eze came on, that definitely changed, and yeah, they started testing De Gea more frequently. United, I felt, uh, defended really well for the majority of, of the second half, um, and and all the, all of the first half. Any time they were under pressure, I thought that there were very few players you look at in that United team who played badly tonight. I think the entire defence played reasonably well. The two midfielders, Casemiro and Eriksen, were brilliant. The attack as well. Uh, we're, we're, we're reason reasonably good. It's just uh, I think maybe you could you could say that uh, players like Anthony and Vekos were a little bit quiet at times tonight. But um, other than that, it it was a good defensive performance. But sometimes there's just nothing you, nothing you can do about uh, a goal like what Elise just scored. Um, it, especially when he when he's put it right into uh, the the top corner. However. One of the big talking points of this game, and I thought, by the way, the commentary react, by uh, the commentators, sorry, uh, reacted to Casemiro getting booked his fifth yellow card of the season. I thought, has he already been booked? I can't remember Casemiro being booked, uh, but no, his fifth yellow card meaning he will miss the big game against Arsenal on Sunday. Uh, at is it? Yeah, it must be at the Emirates, I think. So that that's going to be a huge miss for Man United that game. Um, so yeah, but however, as, as big a miss as that might seem, United from the top of my head, I'm, I, and I, I might be wrong, beat Arsenal earlier in the season three one without Casemiro. I th I th seem to remember they had Eriksen and McTominay playing. So if if they can do it like that, well, there's there's no reason why they can't repeat it. Um, this is not unachievable, definitely. Um, but yeah, it was one of them where Casemiro felt as though he had to take one for the team. Uh, he's an experienced player. He knew he knew what he had to do in that situation. Unfortunately, in the end, it hasn't really paid off. Seeing how United had, didn't win the game in the end, but uh, yeah, you, you've, you've got to do it in that situation. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into uh, some player rating stuff with Crystal Palace. Uh, stuff with Guaita. Uh, it didn't have an awful lot to do. It didn't have many saves to make. Um, so I've, I've, I've given him a six. I, f I felt the only dodgy moment was right at the end when Casemiro nearly got onto the end of that corner. Guaita's positioning was quite poor for that. Uh, then the defence, I've given Klein, Gray and uh, Tyrick Mitchell, I've given them all sixes. They, they, they defended fairly resolutely. Uh, and I, I thought Richards, I've given him a seven. Because considering this is, I think it might be his first Premier League start. It that that was good going for your first Premier League game. He barely put a foot wrong. I I don't if if I was given the penalty incident, if if I had to judge the penalty incident, I personally wouldn't have given it a penalty either. Call that Liverpool bias. I am a Liverpool fan, but I, I just don't think that there was enough contact there. And I think that caused sort of it was he sort of leaned into it a little bit. So for me, that wasn't a penalty. And then into midfield, I've given Decore and Hughes both fives because the, that, the goal they were at fault for, and I just don't think they ever really got full control of the midfield until Avira Eze came on with half an hour to go. So yeah, I can't really give them more than a five, to be honest. And then uh, Elise, I've given a seven, cracking free kick. And I thought he had a reasonably decent game as well out on the right. Um, However, I feel as though the only problem with Elise is Luke Shaw being an experienced left back now. He's, you know, been been playing in the Premier League nearly a decade. In fact, it might well have been a decade by now. Um, he, he sort of dealt quite well with the fact that Elise, you know, which way Elise is going to go pretty much every time. You know, he wants to cut back on his left foot. It's, it's similar to a Riyad Mahrez situation. Uh, you know, the, the one-footed cut inside sort of thing. Edouard have given a six. Considering uh, he, he was having to play deeper than he usually did, came very close to scoring, I think six is fair. Zaha have also given a six. Uh, caused trouble without really getting anything from it today, so I've given him a six. And Mateta have given a five. Um, he, I, I quite like Mateta. He, he's, he's, a, he works, he's a hard worker up front for Palace, but... 
um, with Edward playing with him up, up there. I, it just didn't seem to click at all, and Mateta, you rarely heard of Mateta before he got subbed off. And uh, Eze, who came off the bench, have also given a six because he, he made a solid impact on the game when he came on. And then on to United, I've given De Gea a seven, purely for that one brilliant save uh, in, in the first half, one of the saves, probably save of 2023 so far, I can't remember a better one. Um, and I don't think there was absolutely anything any goalkeeper could have done about uh, that at least say free kick. And yeah, wan Saka and Shaw, the full-backs have given sixes, uh, I, th I thought they, they played well. Um, Stop Palace from causing too many problems out wide. So yeah, good games. And then two centre backs for Ran and Martinez. I've given sevens because uh, I thought they both defended well, passed the ball well, and um, Mark Martinez, you know, ha had that big issue in the first half with the head collision, um, and and yeah, um, it didn't let him. In, it didn't. He didn't let it impact him uh, throughout the game. So fair play to him. It, it takes a lot of uh, grit and steel to do that. And then uh, Casemiro, I've given a seven. Uh, another brilliant performance in midfield from him. I think Casemiro, he had uh, a shaky first couple of games for Man United, but ever since then, over the past two or three months, I know the World Cup's been in between then, uh, he, he's been possibly United's main man. I think Rashford, you've also got to give uh, some credit to as well, but... I think Casemiro has been right up there with United's performance this season. Eriksson, I've given a six. Well, actually, no, I'm going to I'm going to up Eriksson to a seven because although it was poor defending, he did do very well for the the goal. I thought so. Yeah, I'll give I'll give Eriksson a seven. Anthony, I've given it a six. Just not not involved enough really. And Rashford, the same. I've given him a six. Not involved enough to give a seven, to be honest. Uh, Veghorst I've given a five, but my man of the match I've given to Bruno Fernandes because it, it was a brilliant goal and I thought some of his passing in this game was outrageous. There was one point where I think it was after Veghorst had been subbed off for McTominay and Fernandes is on the halfway line out, out wide to the right and Rashford stands centre not far from the box and he's he, on the run as well and Fernandes has pinged a ball at him to his, right to his feet. A perfect pass, uh, pass of the match 100%. And yeah, he, he had a really good game, I thought, Bruno Fernandes. So I've given him man of the match for this game. And yeah, it, it was a brilliant performance from him. But yeah, United, it, it, they'll see it as two points dropped given the form they are in, not a point gained. And good good, good result in the end for Palace, I guess. They, they worked for it 100%. Um, but yeah, you, you, the big the big defeat for United though tonight is losing a key player for the match on Sunday against Arsenal. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.